it was always the most fundamental mystery. Where do we come from? Why are we human? Why do we wonder why? When you talk about evolution, the question of why is problematic because evolution is not goal-directed. Evolution is a great big experiment. Evolution describes change over time in descent with modification of species, but there's no overall arching plan in which humans were inevitable. One of Darwin's points was to show that changes can be wrought through ordinary processes of sexual selection. It all came down to sex. The theory of evolution is brutally simple. More young are born, more plants sprout than can survive. And offspring are, by nature, always a bit different from their parents. A mutation can be a fatal defect. Once in a great while, that mutation results in a slightly better chance for survival and reproduction. Survival means the change is passed on in the genes. We cannot actually see plants and animals evolving. We only see the most recent result. It's a gradual process. And when one says evolution is fast or slow, it's still, by the span of a human lifetime, very, very slow. The question is, does something happen in a million years, which is rapid, or in 10 million years, which is slow? The challenge is to imagine the vast span of time. When I was writing The Beak of the Finch, I had the image of one of those frozen waterfalls that you see on the side of the highway on a road cut. You can infer from that that water was trickling down the cliff. You can infer that gradually it's frozen and more has flowed down. And all of those shapes have formed up gradually by that accumulated flow. But you don't, you don't see any of that flow yourself as you're driving by. Try to imagine a million years. Recently, scientists cultured a bacteria that had been locked in salt crystals for 250 million years. To feel that age, imagine if you're in your 20s living your life times 10 million. Imagine. Our imaginations are also the result of evolution. In our brain, in the unimaginably complex matrix of nerve cells that form our mind, deep in the genetic code in those brain cells, there are some structures similar to the genetic code in ancient bacteria. We have learned this uncomfortable fact that we are linked to pond scum because at last science has passed the first milestone in deciphering the codes in our cellular DNA the human genome. We have yet to find a gene structure that is unique only to humans. Obviously there's some differences, but the differences are minor. That's why evolution is a field of study. Every one of our genes came from another species at some other time. No one knows what came before humans. What the stages were between pond scum and now. What we do know is it took an immense amount of time. The competitive instinct to survive and the ability to attract the best mates. If anyone objects to this union, please step forward at this time. The 
first Homo sapiens stepped forward about 100,000 years ago. A best guess by fossil scientists. You may now kiss the bride. Sharks evolved at least 100 million years ago. They even survived the asteroid impact that wiped out almost everything else. And over time, as evolution has continued, we now have the oddly shaped hammerhead shark, eyes on the ends of wing-like stalks. And yet under the skin, inside the cells, checking the structure of the DNA double helix molecule, we share almost exactly the same code for life as the shark. A lot of our protein sequences are 100% identical in all mammals. 100% identical, not close, identical. To understand evolutionary distances, we have to go to yeast and bacteria to find things that are really different from the human genetic code. Three and a half billion years ago, the first DNA molecules began to replicate. Building in complexity, but based on a simple four-letter code, four amino acids. Those four acids in endless combinations controlled all of life then, and they control all life now. All species in existence today will continue to evolve and may eventually blink out. But the four-letter code of DNA will continue forever. Where our species is right now, I think, is a great experiment. Um, we really don't know in the long run how successful our species is going to be. And, and we're a tiny little blip in time for evolution the way we exist currently. Charles Darwin whose original brilliant thinking gave us the theory of evolution, came ashore here for the first and last time on September 17, 1835. He was 26 years old and was serving as a ship's naturalist aboard the HMS Beagle. He had been at sea for four years and had been seasick almost every day. He was happy to be on solid land but taken back a bit by the brutal landscape. Everywhere the lava is covered by stunted sunburnt brushwood, which shows little signs of life. The dry and parched surface, being heated by the noonday sun, gave to the air a close and sultry feeling, like that from a stove. We fancied even that the bushes smelt unpleasantly. And it reminded him of the misty origins of the earth. He said, here more than any place else, perhaps, we are brought closer to that mystery of mysteries, the origin of species. Charles Darwin stayed ashore in the Galapagos only five days, about the same.